Hello, good evening, Oral Gibbs, and welcome to Oral Gibbs Live. And with me this evening, I have a very interesting and uh, remarkable St. Martin businessman. It's none other than Mr. Hughes. How are you doing, sir? Good evening, Oral. It's nice to be here with you. Uh, good evening. I mean, on the radio, they call you what? Um, Big Daddy OJ. <laughs> <laughs> Big Daddy OJ. <laughs> it was a long time ago, right? Yeah, 45 years. Wow, time goes fast. And right? counting. <laughs> wow, it's incredible. Yep. You know, I got to say that you are. Um, you are like um, an icon in St. Martin, and you're a very modest person. Um, I don't think any person in St. Martin today understands this island better than you, from business to basically everything. I've been around quite a while, as you know. <laughs> I'm 62 right now, and you know, I've been around quite a while. I've been involved in a lot of different things, and from different perspectives, you can see how, how things have changed over the years. You know, and, continue to change as we speak. Uh -huh. you know. Because uh, you, you, you're in broadcasting, in the construction field, um, real estate. Real estate. I mean, what, what you're not in? <laughs> no, one of the things uh, I, I did over the years, you know, you, you see opportunities. Yeah. When you see opportunities, you try to grab them. And you know, the 70s and 80s were our great years. They were our golden years. Yeah. And I got involved in a lot of different things. And luckily, you know, I survived. Now, it's getting more difficult, you know, to, to function in St. Martin like you used to. Um, I, I have reached the age where I've slowed down considerably. The construction is wow. out of the door right now. I'm still with radio. Uh, I still do some real estate. But, you know, you, you start to slow down after a while. <laughs> you know, when you, when you look at St. Martin today, um, you don't see many local business people like yourself anymore. You know, there are a lot of local business people, but they are, they are, um, they are small business owners. Uh -huh. You know, in, in, in our times, you were thinking about being a big business person. Um, I can remember when I did uh, Plaza 21. Yeah. You remember that? Right. right? In yeah. 1986, that was the talk of the town. You know, it was the first time we had 13 local stores right. uh, established on the island, and all the people who were involved were local people. And we had a Lenny Priest, we had a Valerie Heaterson, we had Vance James, we had Will Paul Bookstore with um, Clifton James. We had, we had quite a few local business people. Arthur Legis, yeah. he was one of the first that, that, that entered that. Uh, we had Jules Chaville. And those were all local business people. And we, we managed to put that together. And it was pretty successful at the time. Mm, 1986. When you look back at that, 30 something <laughs> years ago, uh -huh. it makes you know that you're getting old. Um, and then I went over into the, the Gravy Sports Auditorium right after that. The Gravy Sports Auditorium was a dream. I used to be involved in basketball at the time. I thought it was a great idea. We got the opportunity at, from the then uh, leader of the government, Claude Wadi, uh, myself, and Bobby Otley. We were, were president and I was the treasurer at the time, and we decided we are going to build a stadium. And we did that, and we successfully did that in 1986. Um, after that, I did some other things, but those were the things that I thought were, were, were some of the, the better projects that I completed on the island. It was also pioneering at the time, because someone did it before that. No. The, 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 the Gravy Sports Auditorium, um, at the time when we did it, it was for the LIBA tournament. Mm -hmm. We were going to have this tournament here in St. Martin, and we were wondering where we we're going to keep it. And it's like, uh -huh. you know, hey, we can do it. And, and we got the opportunity to do it, and we did it. You know, you, you also um, was a promoter. Man. You left that out. I remember you brought, <laughs> you brought in the, the wrestlers back in yeah, 1989? Yeah, yeah. Rocky Johnson right. and, and Killer Kyle Cox <laughs> and Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, those were, those were great times. Those were great times. Um, that was a historical event at, the, at that point in time because I can remember uh, wrestling was one of the biggest sports on the island. Um, I remember traveling to, to, to Miami and then following them up to, to Tampa. Hmm. And that's when I realized how fake wrestling was. <laughs> you know, because you see the same show they put on in Miami, you, mm -hmm. you travel with them to Tampa and then the same show. I'm like, this is, this is a good act. They do get hurt. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't underestimate uh, you know, what right. you see. But uh, it's an act, and it, it did big time for St. Martin. When Rocky Johnson came to St. Martin, I mean, we had over 5,000 people at the airport. I don't but yeah? Yeah. Wow. It was, what, you remember what year that was? I can't remember the year. 
I still have the flyers. Yeah. <laughs> because I remember um, in 89, you brought the Von Erix and Ivan Kolop. No, you yep. remember that one? Yeah. And they were in this program. <laughs> and at that time, we used to do the show from live from cable TV. Right. And then Ivan Kolop you know, was on the air with me live. Right. And one of the Von Erich guys went downstairs, got on the phone, and called into the show. You know? Yeah. And the thing they were doing, I realized it's really a fake, but it's yeah, not those really. Guys, those guys are great actors, you know. Um, uh -huh. Right now, uh, I think wrestling is almost out. You still have the young, the young group that, that is in right now, but the kick, kickboxing, I think, mm -hmm. is the new thing. Yeah. yeah, I haven't gotten involved with that, but I think it's going to be big time here in St. Martin whenever it comes. But you know, as, as, a, as a local businessman, I think what you've done to, you've um, quietly helped a lot of local business people get started. Because one of the things you do as a business person, you, you get as you go through life, you grow through life. Yeah. You know how that works, right? And you get to know things. And if you know it, you should pass it on to other people. Because it doesn't make sense for you to be the only one there doing it. Right. And other people can you know, assist and, and, and do well with, it, with the experience that you have. You pass it on. I think that's one of the things that I've done over the years. You know, I've known a lot of people who came to me for advice. And you give them the best advice possible. Yeah. And, and, and especially when it comes to dealing with banks and all that. Um, sometimes a headache. But if you know what you're doing, you can make it very easy. Because the banks are sometimes very cooperative. Mm. And sometimes they can give you a hard time. But you know, when you get the hard time, you don't just give up. And that's where the problem lies sometimes. You know, they get a no today, and then they just you know, fold up and then walk away. But you don't do that. You, you continue being persistent and trying to explain to them what you are about. And then eventually, you will succeed. A, a, a lot of um, local business people are very afraid of to get involved because of what get involved with what banks it, with banks yes <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you uh, at the time when I used to get involved with banks I had no fear because mm -hmm. you know uh, I never I look at loans two ways up to this day I don't have a house you believe that <laughs> wow I don't have a house uh, why I once read in a book that there are good loans and bad loans mm -hmm. a house is a bad loan you got to pay for it right if you build a building and you get it rented other people pay for it i live in a hotel right now at midtown hotel right <laughs> i don't have to pay rent so it's pretty <laughs> pretty good <laughs> for me just to you know live there mm -hmm. without having to pay rent if you build a house you build a house for 200 300 thousand dollars you know the cost of a house right, expensive. and you have to you have to pay for that it, it's going to cost you yeah. it'll cost you a thousand, two thousand dollars a month, probably in in, um, in, 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 in in mortgage payments. And that's a lot of money. Exactly. So maybe my my way of doing it is different, but I, I think it worked for me. But, but you're also a hotelier because you want to. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I got into that because of, of the construction business. Mm. You know, you ended up putting down a, a structure and then you say, hey, why not turn it into a hotel? And, and it worked. And I, I know uh, there was a time when a lot of the small local hotel properties had a lot of issues how is it now is it more we still have, we still have issues we still have issues we we, we don't get a, a, a fair share mm -hmm. um one of the things you see like in the off season yeah the big hotels they come up to our prices so automatically we're in trouble in uh -huh. the off season you know yeah. unless unless we do something uh, you know extremely low and then you just break even but um in those areas, we don't we don't get to promote as uh, well as we should. Over the, you know over the years, we've not been able to to, to promote ourselves. Um, we're not a, most of us are not a part of the 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 chateau. Uh -huh. uh, this is chateau. You mean the Martin Hotel Association? Yeah. And SHG. those 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 who who are part of it, they get the benefits of it. We I, I was never a part of it because I depend mainly on local um, clientele. The the local not local, Caribbean. the Caribbean mm -hmm. tourist. So, you know, that works very well for us. You know, th there was a time when we used to see a lot of people from the Caribbean coming to St. Martin. Are they still coming in those large numbers? They still come, not in the large numbers like before. Mm -hmm. When we had uh, Stanford with the airlines, yeah. the Caribbean Express, uh, whatever the name of the, the, the airline was, they used to come in here, they were paying $65 a day. Uh -huh. I mean, a, a, a flight from Antigua to St. Martin, $65. Wow. That was a steal of a deal. And in those days, when you, when you look for weekends, 
we were full to capacity every weekend. And that was good business. But after that, you know, the prices start going through the roof, especially for Caribbean travelers. The prices start going through the roof. And uh, today, to travel from Antigua to St. Martin is almost $300. It costs more than going to New thing. York. More than going to New York, yeah. and that's the truth. Yeah. So with that situation, you know, it's, it's not working out too well. And when you look at, you know, I know you've been in construction a lot. Uh, that area is also very slow these days. So. Construction is also very slow. Mm. I think, you know, with, with the downturn in the economy over the, the, the past two, three years, I think um, it is affecting all of us. Oh. It's affecting all of us. It's affecting all of us. And uh, the construction, I got out of construction two years ago because I could not uh, maintain a crew without having work. You know, if you don't have the work, it doesn't make sense having the crew. So what I do now, you know, I just have a maintenance man or two to, to help me out around, the, you know, the different projects. But when you, Mr. Hughes, when you look at the, the island today, I mean, how you see it? Are, are, are you, I mean, you, you've invested a lot on, in this island. Are, are you optimistic um, right now? I have to remain optimistic, but at this point in time, I'm very concerned. Mm -hmm. The, the constant changing of governments does not create stability, and you know that. Right. I mean, the whole island, uh, the, the, the way how the politicians are behaving right now, it's, it's very scary for us as business people to be investors at the same time because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know? uh, with the situation that we've seen here over the, the past five years, five governments in five years, it is not lucrative for business, period. Uh, and we cannot continue like this. There's nothing wrong with the Constitution. Everybody keeps talking about this Constitution, but there's nothing wrong with the Constitution. You need to have good leadership. That's one of the first things we need is good leadership in the country. Um, second, we need people who are loyal. You should be loyal to your exactly. party. Yeah. If you don't have any loyalty to the party the or to the leader, then, then, then we are in trouble. Hmm. And that's where I think we are going wrong. And, and this last scenario that we had here, it really bogged down the whole island. Everybody, you know, I think the people are fed up. You know, when, when, when you see how the people reacted to it, you know, everybody is like, you know, they, these guys are just doing things. And, and what, what concerns me most, every time they do these crazy things, they talk about for the people. In my opinion, it's for uh -huh. themselves. And that's why I have a problem with it, because they're not doing things for the people. You uh -huh. know, they're doing things for their own interests. I mean, and, 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 and they're jockeying for positions, et cetera, et cetera. And, and it's not benefiting the whole country. I know you, you, you've also been in, involved in the political process, the <laughs> political party. What, what your plans are there? Well, we're still thinking about it. We, we were busy. You know, we, we, we had filed uh, with the Electoral Council. Right. Um, we had a few flaws there because we were a foundation and you have to be an association now. And so we had to go and redo that. Um, so I'm glad that the, the election was postponed. <laughs> I'm one of the people that was glad uh -huh. it was postponed. Um, so based on that, we're definitely going to be looking at, at, at launching the PPA again. Uh, we're looking for at least 23 good candidates. Uh -huh. when, when, when I've been involved in politics quite a while, right. as you know. Um, I've been involved from the days of Joe Richardson. That was one of my mentors. I, I got involved in politics in 1979 with the UPDG. <laughs> oh, yeah, ago. that's a long time ago, <laughs> yeah. And from then I've always stayed close to politics. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen most of the people that I've, I've surrounded, you know, that I've, I've handled, they've did, done pretty well. Uh, the last one we did was Gracita, I think she did pretty well. We had um, Frankie Myers was one of the first persons that I was handling yeah. his campaign. Uh -huh. I was handling his campaign when he was with PPR, what? with Joe Richardson. Uh -huh. And today he's one of the, the leading you know, uh, vote-getters on the island, you know. Um, you didn't handle Francis one time, though? Francis, Francis has been very close to me uh -huh. because Francis got involved in the politics when we were with Joe Richardson. Right. He used to be uh, the poster boy, uh -huh. you know, him and Addy, Addy Richardson. These guys, you know, they were my boys. And uh, we still get along pretty good. Um, but uh, I, I've been around politics quite a while. I like politics. I don't know if I'll ever run again. I don't think that's one of the things that I will do. But being involved is uh, a definite. How, how you see change from in, in 78, 79, I was still in the States, but I heard that it was quite 
different in those days or when the SP, SPM, SPA, yeah. SPA had started? SPA, yeah. It was SPM, SPM? originally, yeah. oh, SPM okay. originally, then it ah. went to SPA. Um, that's 79. You asked me how I see it? Yeah, how, how was it? Because I understand it, it was a lot different then than how... It was the first time that we ever got, got um, that the Democratic Party at that yeah. point in time with Claude Wadi ever got serious, uh, stiff competition. Vance James was then heading the list with SPM. Yeah. Uh, you had people like, like, like Leo Friday, who was one of the big vote getters. We had Vincent Dunkel, who was, who was also elected. They got two seats in that election. Uh, in 1979. So Vincent Dunker and Vance James were, were holding the seats for SPA, mm -hmm. SPM yeah. at the time. Then after they went over to SPA and you know the results of that yeah. since then. But um, it's the same, the same philosophy I think that the NA is carrying on. Mm, if it's going to work, we'll have to wait and see because up until now it has not worked successfully for them in terms of capturing uh, they won one election, and six months after they lost that election, um, uh, was what, how much years ago? That's about four years ago. Yeah. You know? But uh, we are here, and as, as a St. Martin, I consider myself a St. Martin. I wasn't born here, but I consider myself a St. Martin. I've, I've been here from the time I was six months old, and I think that we need to, our politicians need to step up to the plate because they're not doing enough to, to get this country settled somewhat. There's too much confusion, too much, you know. Uh, these guys, what, 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 what annoys me most of the time, these guys get along fine when they're together. Mm -hmm. And when they get on the stage, on the political stage, yeah. it's a whole different thing, you yeah. know. And there's no respect for each other. And, and I, I don't think, I think they need to go back to basics and start to respecting each other and trying to cooperate with each other and trying to make things happen for the island. Start working for St. Martin instead of for themselves. Are, are you surprised to see how we are now? Because before October 10, 2010, um, a lot of us, I thought things would be a lot better. I didn't realize we will be in this kind of financial problem as we are now. You have to look at it. You have to look at it from a different perspective, um, uh, OJ. Uh -huh. When we were part of the Netherlands Antilles, right? right. Uh -huh. We were part of the Nether Netherlands Antilles. We had Curacao as a backup. We've taken out over all the headaches of the federal government. We've taken over a whole police force <laughs> that we can't afford. Uh -huh. We have a whole justice system. We have, you know, all these departments that were, were, were held by the central government are now held by our local government. And we have to pay for that. Whether you like it or not, we have to pay for it. And can we afford it? Are we ready to assume the responsibility of taking over all these things? All the time, you know, you, you listen to government and you think things are going well. They always tell you how great it is. When you hear Richard Gibson today, <laughs> you get a complete <laughs> different story. Yeah. There is no money. And I know he's serious. You know, I don't think he's joking with it. So if there's no money, how do we continue like this? Right. Paying payrolls. We have, we have all kinds of different uh, things to contribute to. And we can't afford it. Are we, can we borrow money from Holland? Are they going to be willing to give us more money? Because that's where the problem is. It's all about the money. And I, I think it's, it's, it doesn't sound good. But, uh, you know, when you, when you look at it, uh, it seems like if you look at the players mm -hmm. that are involved in politics today, they've been there for the last 20 plus years. Yeah, they've been there quite a while. But at the same time, I. I we need some new players, mm. and that's one of the things that I always, you know, was looking at. When we came out with, with, with PPA, for instance, right. we brought a lot of professionals on board, um, and we thought that they would make a difference. But the old heads, I listen to them all the time. I listen to them all the time. Uh. When I listen to a Sarah a Scott Williams, mm. I listen to a William Marlin, I listen to a Theo Heiliger, these guys, uh, they understand politics, they sound good when they get out there, and they are real politicians. The others are trying to be, you know, politicians yeah. wannabes. You know, they're not ready for, for, for the main stages yet, but they are on the main stage. Yeah. 
And, and I don't know if, you know, say what you want about Sarah. I think Sarah is a great leader when it comes to defending my interests abroad. I would send, uh, I would send Sarah Westcott Williams to defend St. Martin abroad, but she cannot handle these guys here. These, these guys are renegades, mm. and she cannot handle them. Yeah. You know, I'm saying that, and, and I'm serious with it, because I've seen how they behave. And I think the woman, the woman has had her, f <laughs> her hands full mm. with all of them. Because if you get a, a, a Theo Heiliger, for instance, I, I've heard her say a few days ago, they were building a bridge. She didn't even know what, was, what the bridge was all about. And she's the prime minister of a country. Uh -huh. How does he build a bridge? And I'm the prime minister and don't know that he's building a bridge, basically. <laughs> that's, that's basically what she was saying. Mm. You know, she didn't say it in those words. But right. I'm, I'm like, so he is the biggest vote getter on the island. She's the leader of the country. That poses a problem, <laughs> however you look at it, right? And I think with things like that, you know, we have to be very careful. You know, I, 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 uh, I recently taped with um, MP uh, Sylvia Matza. It's yeah. going to air this coming Wednesday. And he said in that interview that he wasn't a party, and he didn't even know who was appointed by his party leader. So. You, you see, this, this is where, where the leadership comes in. I don't think, you know, I think they have to work on the, the leadership skills somewhat to try to keep the parties together because if you, you're the leader and you don't make sure you, you, you have all the people involved, involved, <laughs> basically that's it. They have to be involved in what you're doing because if you start just delegating here, delegating there, and taking, you know, taking decisions that the rest of the party don't like, you're going to have, find yourself in a problem. And I think that's what Theo's problem is right now. You know, he, he's, he's, he's been trying to, to, to maneuver, trying to please everybody at the same time. When I look at what happened with UP, mm -hmm. you know, with my leader, Rosita Arendelle, she, she, she worked with UP. We have no regrets of doing that. Uh, I must say that, you know, it's, it's a decision that we took. It was a difficult decision. It was spearheaded by, uh, I must say, <laughs> I'd like to say this, by Joe Richardson and, and Frankie Myers. They insisted that, you know, we go together and, and, and I agreed with them because these are people that I know pretty right. well and I thought it was a great idea. They sold it to me. I sold it to Grosita and we did it. She became the president of parliament, fine. But at the same time, they went to war with a list of 23 people. Do you realize those that went into parliament were good people? I think, the, <laughs> but they were all scared to leave Parliament and go into the ministry. Yeah. Why? Because they didn't want to take a chance of getting kicked out. And when you get a situation like that, the good people stay in Parliament, and then you put other people in there who were not even on the list. Only Claret Connell right. was the one that went in from the list. So you have how much? You had seven seats. Right. Seven seats. So eight people were used. You had twenty-three other people that were not used. I don't think that's fair. So you have a lot of disgruntled people exactly. walking around, <laughs> looking at you every day. You gotta get a matzo like, hey, yo, <laughs> what's going on with me? Uh -huh. You know. And then the next problem you have with government right now, uh, I'm sure you would agree. Every parliamentarian wants to have his own minister. That, that, that creates a problem. Huh? That's a problem right there in itself. You know. And and how are they gonna avoid this in the future? Mm. How are they gonna avoid it? I don't know. I, I guess I guess they're working on it. The electoral reform is supposed to solve that problem, but you, here's where you need leadership. I know because uh, in the interview I did with our MP um, Sylvia Matza, he speaks about the, the coalition that he supports mm -hmm. and how they're working, and uh, I, I was impressed because according to him, how they're working, if that's the way they're really working, I think uh, it's the first time that you've seen a coalition working so well, in a way, behind closed doors. Well, you know, hope so. so I hope, hope that so. we, 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 We're not <laughs> behind closed doors with them, so they're <laughs> going to tell us whatever they want us to believe, you know. Exactly. But you know, um, I don't know if you, if you feel the same way, the NA, the National Alliance, mm -hmm. to me is the most disciplined party right now, in terms of its membership and that they can run an election, get elected, and their uh, people can say, well, I'm not going to gonna go to parliament, I'll be a minister, and if they have to go back to parliament, the city is little bit They've demonstrated that, especially yeah. when uh, Mr. Rudolph Samuel went in. Right. Um, when it was time for him to move out, he moved out and let his leader you know, go back in. An honorable thing to do. You know, the up, that was a whole different situation with yep. the up, you know? it's a whole different situation. Yeah. 
But uh, I'm sure they'll find common ground sooner or later and find solutions to all these problems that they're facing. Because if they don't, St. Martin's going to go down the drain, I can tell you that from now. Because you can see it in the economy. The economy is going nowhere. Mm -hmm. Up until now, we haven't had a head of our tourism department. That's our bread and butter right there. You realize that? Right. Right? How do you run a country that depends on tourism without the tourism department head to really guide it, to yeah. set the policies, to, to start you know, planning, proper planning? I think you know, if we continue like this, it's not going to be too good. I hope that the coalition takes that part seriously because that's, that's our bread and butter. Yeah. And they have to take it seriously. And you know what you're saying is so true because the, right now there's there's no direction at all. We don't know what right. we're doing. Absolutely. And, and that's that's all business. And and right now everybody's in campaign mode because everybody wants to get reelected uh, in September mm. as we go into the election. So not much is going to get done. I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> not much is going to get done. <laughs> how, how you feel about um, you know with with the, all the problems we have with the budget and so forth? Mm. Do you think would you support? More taxes, new taxes. Every time I see the tax, but I want to run. <laughs> it's, it's, it, we are being taxed to death. If you look at the amount of taxes you pay if you have employees, right. if you see, see your payroll and you see the amount of tax you have to pay every month, it's a lot of money. I don't know if you can, we can take any more taxes. Can we? You know what I mean? The, the, the general population, I think, is fed up with taxes right now. Uh, I'm one of the people that, you know, I would love to pay taxes as long as I'm making money, but sometimes you're just scrunting and then you, you, you still have to come up with this tax every 15th of the month. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's rough out there. It's really rough. Do you think the politicians understand the turnover tax and what it's doing to this island, this country? to the politicians, they don't have a payroll to meet every month, like you and me. Right. They don't. As long as they don't have to do that, I mean, they are above the fray. Uh -huh. you know, they, they just take decisions and we just have to comply with them. Is it fair? Well, we put them there, so I guess, you know, we're the ones who elect them. But sometimes they need to give some consideration to, to the people of St. Martin and start to realize that they have to do more. You look, you look, at, you look at the roads, for instance. We have to pay our car tax right now. Right. You ever drove down Back Street? Oh, lately? oh God, or it's Front Street? Yeah. It's like How it's do you feel when you drive down there? It's like you're in the ocean. Eh? This is it, you know. And, and these are some of the things. If we have to pay, we have no other choice but to pay to get those number plates. Yeah. But at the same time, fix the roads. Make sure we got some good roads that we can drive on. This is the center of town. I've seen tourists fall yeah. in town. And, and when you see that, you know, we depend on tourism. But if you got roads that bad and tourists are falling, you might as well just stay on the boardwalk and stop going through town. Yeah. Oral Gibbs live and call. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Jose. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, question for Mr. Hughes. We were wondering when uh, if you're going to get that 1300. Because Mr. Hughes, from there on the TV, you can't hear it. And on FM, it's a problem, especially if you're not grounded. So, if it's possible, could you elaborate a little bit on 1300 Cross Street? Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. Um, I was expecting a call like that. Um, PJ82 is going to be back on the air. We have a building permit uh, almost a year now. We were waiting to get the plot of land that was promised to us. We managed to get it now, and we are hoping that it's signed off hopefully this week. If it's signed off this week, we should start construction because we have to we have to move from the Hope Estate. That's the, oh, the first okay. thing. The Hope Estate is a is a residential area right now. You can't have radiation over people's heads anymore. You know what I mean? And we have to move from there. We're going to be going next to the Festival Village. And that's a good area too for the grounding. That's a good area, area for grounding. Yeah. You, you know, in the radio business, that's important because the signal gets out much better right. from from the water, the salt water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's going to be back on the air. Pretty soon, we are hoping that we get our everything, because it's not dependent on us right now. It's dependent on, on because we have a transmitter. Uh -huh. <laughs> we do have a transmitter. All we need is a, an antenna uh, to put up. I mean, the antenna, uh, uh, I call it a room mm -hmm. to, to house the transmitter from Hope Estate to bring it there. As soon as we get that done, we should be in the air, hopefully within about two or three months. You know, um, when it comes to radio, with all the registrations we have in St. Martin, people mm -hmm. still turn the PGD to radio. Yeah, but you know, 
it's been a household name, mm. OJ, you know, right. that for, for 45 years. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's, it's something that people grew up with. I have a lot of new radio stations. We have like 16 radio stations in the market right now compared to when we were in radio right. in the beginning, you know. But uh, things have changed, but we still continue to maintain our position. Um, I think our news department is the strongest. Uh, when it comes to news, everybody tunes into the news. We have good talk shows. And I think we still have a good future. You know, what I, what I admire about you too is that your, your concern, your passion for St. Martin, and especially when it comes to talk shows, because mm -hmm. no other station, and, and I don't want to put on anyone, but no other station does what you do or actually allow your people to do. I think, I think my people are capable. They've been there for a long time, and I think they, they, they know what they're doing, and we try to just maintain a certain, you know, Decorum, yeah, to <laughs> make sure they don't get out of control, but it goes pretty okay. Let me take a call here. There, Oral Gibbs live on caller. Hello, is that caller? Good evening, good evening, good evening, sir. Good evening, you and you. Good evening, Doc. Yes, a well behaved Sunday school boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could remember. <laughs> I had him to deal with. That's right. <laughs> and the scouts, and, and the scouts as well. To the brigade. <laughs> but Don. Yes, sir. You don't have to even attempt to be searching your mind, uh, saying, being a small, but he was not born here. Done. You indeed, definitely, is a real Martin. Thank you, Doc. I feel the same way. And you, Scott. True. Take a cut in your tail, cut your back, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. You know, L.B. Scott was a good friend of my aunt, husband, Alexander Sanders. They used to work together, as a matter of fact. Yep. So, Don, enjoy yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. You are blessed. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks, Doc. Uh, that, that, that was very nice. Yep. Yeah, let me take a call for you. Let me see. So, Oral Gibbs live on caller. Hello? Hello? Yeah, you're on live caller. Go right ahead. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Don. How are you? Good evening, sir. Uh, uh, can you tell me? You're going to win back the radio station. I'd be very glad for that. Hello? Yes, we're working ahead. on it. Oh, man. You have, no, you have your TV on. That's the reason why you're getting confused. Turn your TV off, and then you won't hear yourself two times. Just turn, yeah, just turn off your TV, and then continue speaking. That's the reason why you're getting a little confused there. Hello? Yeah, you, you can hear me now? Yeah, I can oh, hear you. Go, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Hi, right, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Hughes. Good evening. That's, that's very great when you say the radio station is going to come up because every time I leave and go to think it, every morning I get up and listen to my news. Yeah. I'll be very glad when that happens. No problem. We'll work on it. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Thanks. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I think a lot of stations are afraid to have talk shows, call-in shows. While you you allow it all the time, you know. Well, you were the first. <laughs> you, you always have to remember yeah. that you were the first uh, real talk show on St. Martin, and and I can remember that day. And we always remember it, you know, when nobody called. You know, we've changed. We've changed. I mean, that program changed the way how St. Martin people behave yeah. because before people were scared. Right. As a matter of fact, let's go a little further. You started a talk show host, and then you had to end it yeah. for a reason because the people were too vocal. Yeah. So you got a better job, <laughs> and you moved on. Right. <laughs> you know, but um, eight that, months later, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah eight months. You know, it was a very powerful program, and 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 and, and people were speaking out. Before that, people never spoke out on St. Oh. Martin. And, and the thing is, you know, I, tell people, I was I was walking behind you for a long yeah, time to get to get it done. You know, and the thing about it too, what was so unique is that here you had it was different because I was sitting by myself, right. and people just calling and speaking and and. In those days, yeah. that was something very difficult. Unique. Yeah, you know, right. 
Yeah. You you lived in the states. You saw it being done there. You came home. You wanted to introduce it. You were not sure how to, how people would react. Yeah. So you were a little cautious. But at the same time, you know, after after it started to go, we couldn't stop it. And now <laughs> they can't. We train. Now they can't do without it. Let me take a call. You got Oral Gibbs live and call. Hello. Hello. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Gibbs. Good, Good night. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm calling there to my big boy, but that's why I'm calling. <laughs> I did not hear was so pretty until I see him tonight on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I will see him on the step when I pass him. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but what I want him to do for me, mm -hmm. he was on the, the airport board. Please back and see if he could get in here. <laughs> Bring down the flight for us who got to go to me this. Not think it. Me this. Because... My sister come down here for my cousin back general, and they had to pay um, a thousand and forty fifty dollars. That is four hundred US, and it's a shame because that kind of ticket we can buy go to New York or anywhere. Couple weeks ago, they had it in the newspaper so that you can buy a flight from here to Puerto Rico for $1.99, which is 200 U.S. And Nevis is only 45, not even 45 minutes, you can say. Almost 45 minutes. And it's a shame that we have to be paying so much from here to Nevis. Everybody is complaining. Antigua is farther than Nevis. And Antigua is much cheaper than going to Nevis. You got to pass Nevis to get another hour to go to Antigua. And it's a shame. It should do something with Winia for people who have to go Nevis. My mother ain't there now, but I still have to go because I got my house in Nevis. And I got to go to see that the thieves them don't be in it. <laughs> so see if they can change the ticket for us. Give us a relief now. It's getting worse than worse. Thank you. Good night, Mr. Gale. Love you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a serious situation when you look at it, the airfares around the Caribbean. It's, yeah. just, it's, it's, it's not encouraging at all. Exactly. I think I'm going to call for you. Oral Gibbs live and call her. Hello? Is that caller? But it seems like it's like it's a part of the industry because if you're flying from St. Martin to Orlando, mm -hmm. it's cheaper than flying from St. Martin to Miami. Yeah. And Miami is closer, you know? So. Everything on the call for you. Oral Gibbs live and call. Hello. Yes, hello. Good night. Good night. I know Mr. Donjo was very involved in basketball years ago. He used to send the youngsters to North Carolina to play basketball. Can you elaborate on that, please? Bye-bye. All right. Elaborate on it. <laughs> um, I was the president of the Basketball Association at that point in time, and we, we managed to send out, the first one that went out was a guy by the name of... Um, Seafried? Not, not. It wasn't Seafried. I can't remember his name. He is, he is, uh... That's a long time ago? It's quite a while ago, what she's talking about. We had, like, five or six guys that went to North Carolina to uh -huh. play ball. Oh, okay. And the purpose of that, at that point in time, was we saw how Antigua did it. It doesn't make sense reinventing the wheel. Uh -huh. Antigua had, when we played in Lima, Antigua had, like, five people who were in college playing ball. And whenever they go out to play big tournaments, major tournaments, they would just fly their big boys in to play the tournament. Really? They were Antiguans. Wow. So we were trying to emulate what they were doing. Uh -huh. And I had a friend up there, Bishop McDuffie, and uh, we spoke about it. He had a school that, 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 that really catered to basketball. And he gave scholarships as well. And we sent guys up there. Cedric Lambert was the first one that went. And Siegfried Hodge went. Uh, we also had Miguel, Miguel Fleming. We mm -hmm. had Biggie and Smalley, the, mm -hmm. the Hodge brothers. Yeah. And, you know, those were the things that we were trying to do at that point in time to try to get our boys, you know, in college and playing ball. But, you know, times have changed considerably. Government needs to get involved <laughs> right now. <laughs> you, can't do it, you can't do it on your own oh, like you used to do before. Right? Yeah, it's very expensive. But you know, I, I know you also was really involved in the basketball. And yeah. let me ask you now, why you, why you think we haven't been successful in getting one of our players in the NBA? 
because there's no structure in basketball anymore. At that point in time, we had we had some of the best basketball players in the Caribbean. These guys were making headlines wherever they go. And the first thing you do with them is to try to get them to college. And if you get in college, that's how you make your name, right? We had a young guy here who was, was prone to be a, a, a good basketball, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bobby Otney's son. But I think he, he gave up on that after a while. He wasn't focused enough. But uh, this guy was, he had all the attributes of being a great basketball player, an NBA player. But, you know, sometimes when you're young, you don't realize what you got right. uh, until, until it's too late. Seems like we, we've been a little more successful in the Major League yeah. Baseball. Yeah. So mine has a lot of talent, but again, it needs to be structured. You need to have good coaches. Uh, and, and the days of volunteerism is gone. <laughs> you know, we used to volunteer. It was, a, it was like a hobby, you know, you yeah. do it because you like it and you get involved. But today you need to bring coaches in. You need to pay them to, 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 to keep the teams, uh, or the players up to speed because, you know, you can't go there and... and we only participate in, in tournaments now. We don't compete. Mm. You know, I, I look at, at the sports right now, basketball, volleyball. I can remember the days when volleyball used to, 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 I mean, we had some great volleyball players here in St. Martin. When we had tournaments here, mm. tournaments was commanded a thousand people a night. Basketball, same thing. We had baseball. Baseball is gone. Completely gone. When last have you seen a baseball game? Oh, yeah, it's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was a time when it was really... When they were doing yeah. well, you know, but we, I don't know, I don't know where the problem is. It's some, I think government needs to sit down with, 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 with the stakeholders and try to assist them because they need assistance and they need somebody to coordinate everything uh -huh. to, to make it happen again. Do, do you and think it starts in the schools. Yeah. Do you think to that there's been a reversal of the people, so we have more people from the Eastern Caribbean, former British territory, they're into cricket, not baseball? No, we have a lot of basketball players on this island, mm -hmm. a lot. I was sure you could pick up 150 basketball players in St. Martin. But they, 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 they play, they don't play seriously. They don't take it seriously. They, they come to play tonight, they don't come to play mm -hmm. tomorrow. And you go to the basketball, I just passed there a few minutes ago. You go there, there's no audience. The audience will make you a great basketball player. Mm -hmm. you, you know, the right. audience need to, to boost you. Uh, and get you going, you know. But if you you go there tonight, if you find ten people in the stands, you find a lot. Wow. You know, so things have changed considerably. And the young kids today, they they're into Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> they're different. You you've also um, been behind uh, the page of the two Caribbean um, Carnival yeah. Queen Show. Yeah. Yeah, I did that for eight, 18, 19 years. I did for nineteen years, and after a while, you know. Uh, there was always a lot of antagonism between us and the SCDF. Uh -huh. And, and it, after a while, you know, you just, you know, we, you don't need that anymore. You know, I get, I get fed up with things very easily <laughs> if, if it's not going my way. Uh -huh. <laughs> not, I'm not a dictator. Right. I can, I, I'm, a, I'm a good team player. But it's, it, we always had problems. At one point, you know, they would take a show and put it in the beginning of Carnival. Then they, they you know, put it on a, a, the middle of the week. And then you're like, hey, if I put it on a show like that, I have to bring people in. You have to feed them. These shows are very expensive. Right. You have to feed these guys for a whole week. You know what I mean? Um, you have to take care of them. You have to pay coordinators. You have to bust them. You have to. So it, it's very costly. And if you're not going to, you know, at least break even, it doesn't make sense anymore. Because we lost. We lost on both the last two shows we lost. And then I said, you know, does, maybe the time for that is over. So you want. Queen shows, queen shows are great, but uh, I think the local shows are doing pretty okay now. Yeah. Uh, Oral Gibbs live and call. Hello? While on baseball, persons like Edward, uh, persons like Edward Jones, Beck, should never, ever be forgotten. That gentleman put his part in baseball. Also, Major Brown. Those really, the giants, their baseball concerns. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, so you mentioned something like um, Major Brown. They were involved yeah. with, the, with, the, with the Little Leagues, right? 
Little League or baseball as well. Uh, Major Brown's been, he, he used to he used to manage the Cahill Tigers oh, okay. at one point. Yeah. Yeah. He used to, he groomed a lot of young baseball players. He used to, I can remember him <laughs> back in the days, just driving oh. around, he's got Rohan and all those yeah. guys, driving in the back of his truck to get him to practice and all that, take him to the beach. He was he was very involved with the youth in basketball, but you don't get people like Major Brown anymore. You know, I mean, that's that's forty years ago. You know, people need to be paid to do this now. You need to pay people to to to, to guide your kids in in, in the proper way in, in in how to play the sport in the right way. Uh, you're not going to get people doing that for free anymore. Well, what I noticed in Sir Martin over the years now too is that if you're doing it for free. Mm -hmm. They don't take it serious either. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. sad, but you know, it's true. Uh, but but how you, how you feel? You know, overall, when you look at us in terms of sports and the way young people, you, you feel that we've gone back. Or? We've definitely gone back in most of the sports I just talked about. Yeah. Uh, the, the volleyball, volleyball used to be tops, baseball tops. We used to be going to Curacao. We played in, in Saint Croix and those places, and and we were playing good ball. Um, soccer, yes. soccer. When last have you seen a good soccer <laughs> game? You know, not yeah. that we're too old to go, but you don't yeah. even hear about it yeah. anymore. You know, I mean, we used to broadcast the games live. Right. We used to broadcast baseball live. No, right now, softball is the is the new thing. You know, yeah. all the old players are playing softball because the young players are not interested in baseball, I guess. And so, softball is the new the new thing. You go to the softball field and you got lots of people out there looking at softball. I think sports has gone backward. I, I look at, um, we had Coach Rajuki as an example, mm -hmm. right. I, I was the president of the, of the Table Tennis Association. When we started Table Tennis, we started with the kids. We formed a board with all the big guys like Calvin, Calvin and, and, and Badajo and all these guys. Right. And we said, look, we got to just supervise uh, Table Tennis. And we started in the schools. At one point, we had like 150 students playing Table Tennis. No. Coach Rajuki is no longer um, involved. Table tennis is down the drain. There's a young guy who's trying to get it back on track, but it's going to take him a long time because he's a busy man. And he, Coach Rajuki was there every day. Yeah. You know, we became the second year after we started the training. The second year we became Antillian champions. That's how good it was. You know, so when you see we have the potential, but we need somebody who's dedicated. He was being paid by government, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> he was being paid by government. Um, and if you don't have somebody there to train them on a regular basis and demand that they come to, to, to practice, et cetera, et cetera, you're not going to get top-notch players. Do, do you think, too, that the, the schools need to play a, a more important role here? I think they should. Mm -hmm. I think they should. Because um, without the school participation in these sports, it, it won't go anywhere. You look at... Um this island and how it has grown, I still see a lot of potential and opportunity on St. Martin. I agree with you totally that. You can see all the potential you want, but if you don't get uh, to get the investment to go along with the potential that you see, mm -hmm. it won't go anywhere. You can see a great idea, but if you don't get the funding to go right. along with it, you know, and this is where the problem lies. I think this is where part of the problem is. I think Either government or the banks need to, 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 to find a way to be able to, 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 to assist young entrepreneurs. The right. young people today are smart. We, we, we underestimate them all the time, right. but they are very smart. Yeah. They think different than us. We have old school thinking, they have modern day thinking. Uh -huh. And you know, if, we, if we don't give them that opportunity, they'll, they'll, they'll sit there and they'll move to another island and they'll probably be successful there. But we need to give our young people, we need to set up a fund, some kind of fund. We put a couple million guilders right. in it. And you come with a plan, you have a bachelor's degree, you're supposed to be smart enough to do business. You know what I mean? Right. You take, take some business classes as well. Use the incubator system probably, where they, they, they are guided and, and you have people there who can right. guide them through the process. But young people need a chance to be able to grow, you know, take their ideas out of their head, right. put it into reality. If we don't do that, you know, there will be no more new entrepreneurs because a new entrepreneur with no money was not an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> you agree with that, right? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. Let me take some call here for you, Mr. Hughes. Is there a caller? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Very quickly. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. I have a question from Mr. Hughes. 
Hoe ons dat ziet, heeft er ook tax compliance en te maken. Dat is een businessman en een politician. Wat is die denk about the tax compliance? I think tax compliance is something that is a must. You have to comply with paying your taxes. But um, I don't know. I can't. I, I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a broad question. People should pay their taxes. I try to pay mine as much as I can. <laughs> okay. People should comply with paying their taxes. I think what, what, what we're hearing a lot about tax compliance, I think we as locals, we are paying the bulk carrying the burden and others are coming in here and they're not paying their fair share i know that and you know that yeah. then then is it fair is that fair i don't think it's fair yeah, yeah. but um i mean uh, i i i i still think that uh, we need more people like you uh, mr hughes um i i think i've done the best i can with what i had i um i, I keep trying every day um, the next generation needs help as well, and yeah. somebody needs to step up to the plate and help them, because they don't have the collateral. Right. <laughs> they they just out of school. They don't have the collateral. That's why I'm saying there should be a fund where they can tap into and 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 guide them, guide them. The bank should be involved. I think <laughs> the banker would be right there looking over their shoulders to make sure they're doing it the right way. Um, they have the tax consultants. They have everything in a building, right. paid by government probably. And, and, and guide them through the process. And then you can get some new entrepreneurs because we have not seen much over the past 20 years, 25 years, sure. there's not much that have become real prominent in, in, in the society. And it's becoming more difficult. It's, and it's becoming more difficult. So we gotta find a way to, you know, to make them <laughs> noticeable. Yeah. Well, um, so usually about, we just have about 30 seconds. Anything else you wanna add in closing? I think, you know, St. Martin is a great place. St. Martin is the greatest piece of real estate on planet Earth. I always say that. And I think, you know, we have to take care of it. I think the politicians need to step up to the plate and do what they are supposed to do to make sure that St. Martin continues to be number one. Because if you look at all the other Caribbean islands, I don't think there's none could come close to St. Martin. Okay. And let me ask you one quick question. question. I think <laughs> uh, September 6th we'll have elections? I know they'll have elections. Uh -huh. We have the politicians are going out there right now. Everybody's calling me. I've never had so many phone calls <laughs> in a long time. <laughs> Everybody's calling you, asking you, you know, what's happening. You know, uh -huh. so I think they're all geared up and ready to run. All right. Well, I want to thank you again for coming in and uh, you're much welcome. Success. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Don Hughes, and that's it for now. See you next time right here on uh, Oral Goods Live. Take care. Good night. Bye.